Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and today we're going to continue talking about juice, which we showed you in the last video, just highlighting a few more of the mix-ins and features that come with juice. So check it out, we're gonna get into that now. So in the last video, we showed you some mix-ins, and in this video, we're also going to show you some of these mix-ins, placeholders, and functions. Now, I'm just going to highlight a couple of mix-ins I really like here first before we get into some of the other stuff. First off, I really like this hoverer mix-in. It allows you to define your property and your hovered property in the same exact line. So in our code here, we have this uh, anchor tag, and I'm actually going to define the hover states in using this mixin. So let's give rid of some of this stuff. And as you can see, the mixin is hoverer. So we can say add include hoverer. Now hoverer takes some options. The first option of which is going to be your property that you're changing. So we're going to be changing the color. And we're going to first put in the value that we want it to be originally. So let's say we want it to be blue. And then after we hover over, we want it to be this disgusting red. So we have this really ugly color change going on here, but it should make it painfully obvious what this is doing. And if you want to check out our CSS, let's go to main.css. And we'll scroll down here. What you can see is that it outputs anchor and then anchor hover color red. So coming back to our document, as you'd expect, these ugly blue links are going to change red when you hover over them. Now this works for all types of properties. In fact, we could do something like, let's make another line and say hover again, but this time let's actually take care of our text decoration. So the property we can pass in is text decoration, spelled correctly. And then the two properties will be none and then underline. Okay, if we save this, come back to our page, we can see that uh, even though it is a little small here, when we're hovering over these, they are getting the text decoration underlined when hover. So this is a nice little mix in that basically prevents you from having to do things like at hover and then type in your hover states. It just cleans up your code, just sort of like everything within this package of juice mixins. Another mixin I really like that's sort of unconventional or different is this responsive mixin. Now this responsive mixin allows you to write responsive code without having to type out breakpoints. Now, as you can see that it takes a property like our last one, and then it takes values, but it doesn't take any breakpoints. Well, that's because it's using the built-in breakpoints for full, medium, and small. If these values aren't fitting for you, you can always change them and override them using uh, just by overriding the value or perhaps even just modifying them in the, in the juice file. But I would say probably just override them by retyping them in your main file. So let's go ahead and check this out and use this in the same situation that we used our BP mixin up here to change the body color. So instead of having uh, a background statement and then a BP mixin, we can just use this add include responsive. For the background color, we want it to go from white to uh, a gray and then to a a little bit darker gray. So if we save this, let's come to our page and you can see at its largest view, it's white. The next largest is this lighter gray and then we go one more and we're gonna get this darker gray. It's not super dark gray, but it's still a bit lighter. Uh, let's check out the CSS that this is actually outputting because I think it's really interesting that we have one line here and then in our CSS, we're actually getting our media queries being output uh, just like this. So this to me is a really elegant solution for a quick and easy, uh, maybe like a one property change for something where you're not changing a lot of stuff at a breakpoint, but like this situation where maybe you're just changing the background color or maybe a width of something is changing at uh, different, different uh, breakpoints and that's it. But this to me is just really super nice and it's a one liner and it's really super powerful. Okay, so let's come back to juice and let's check out some of these placeholders. 
Now, placeholders are pretty much just extend. So for this, we're extending clear fix and it's a simple clear fix. It outputs what you'd expect for clear fix. And this is really no different than most clear fix mix-ins or anything of that nature. It's just nice and easy. Now, next we have hide text, which you just add extend uh, print, uh, percent hide text, and it's going to make your font size zero, color transparent, text shadow none. So it's going to keep it there, but hide it. Uh, extend center, so it, it centers an element horizontally and vertically with position absolute, top 50%, left 50%, and then a translate of negative 50, 50. Vertical center just does the same thing, but half of that. Uh, coverer does position absolute top left zero with 100% height 100% that makes something cover the entire parent or screen depending on if the parent has position relative or something like that and as you can see it's just nice little things like that we just the last one here it's center block uh, display block margin left auto margin right auto so that would just center a block item okay well lastly we have these functions and now uh, these functions are not a ton different than uh, some of your built-in SAS functions. For instance, this tint function is essentially just adding black to something. So if we say tint, it's going to mix with that color 15%. So let's go ahead and see how that works here. Using tint, I'm going to actually uh, change the body color once more. And we're going to say background. And that background is going to be tint. And we're going to tint this white color. We're going to tint it by 20%. Let's save this. I'm sorry, tinting is actually mixing white with the color. I probably forgot that from art school. But we can say tint uh, 000 for 20%. Come back to our page. And we're going to have this lighter gray. In fact, if we tint it a bit more, 70%, it just gets lighter. And likewise, we have tint. We also have shade, which is what I was thinking before, where we mix black with the color. It works the exact opposite of that. Now, strip units is going to remove any units from a number. So let's say we have five pixels. It's giving us five. Now let's come to rem calc, which is going to calculate rems based on a base font size. Now the standard base font size for juice is set to be 16 pixels. If that is not your base font size, we can modify that by overriding the value. You know, at a base size of 16 pixels, a 15 pixel rem calc is giving us 0.9375 rems. And likewise, m calc is doing the same thing, just calculating m values. Now let's come down here and we have some really interesting functions that I haven't seen in a lot of other uh, SAS mix-in packages. This one in particular gives you a random color. So let's go ahead and check it out. What you need is a minimum value from 0 to 255, a maximum value from 0 to 255, and an alpha value. So I'm actually just going to copy this and throw it directly into our page here and once more I'm going to use this as our background color and so the random color let's actually change this to be the lowest is going to be 20 the maximum is going to be uh, 255 and we'll have this be non-transparent so my opacity is just going to be set to 1 let's check out our page and we have this crazy orange color if we save uh, let's actually make a modification and save again come back and we now have this really super bright ugly green color but it's nice because it's giving us something different and I don't necessarily have a use for this right now but I think it's a really interesting idea for a function and I'm glad that somebody has created this and thrown this in this package okay so let's come down here and this last one is just reverse which reverses a string now I would love to see a really cool use of this reverse I personally can't think of anything off the top of my head, but if you have a really interesting way that you're using this reverse function, please leave a comment and let me know. So we mentioned several times that if you don't like the values of something, then you can override them. So 
if you come down here under settings, you can see that these are the variables in your main SCSS file and you can change their default values if you'd like. It says you can override these variables in your main SCSS file to change the default values. Now you could always just come into this juice file here and modify these. However, if you're keeping this up to date with something like Bower, when it gets updated, it's gonna delete that stuff. So a smarter thing would be to simply copy this variable, come in your main uh, SCSS file or wherever you'd like to define it. And then underneath the juice import, you can always redefine it here and say, maybe the base font size should be 24 pixels for some reason. Okay, so this is a better approach, and that way you're not, um, you know, gonna get messed up if that juice file gets reset or anything like that. And this allows you to configure your uh, juice settings the way that you're gonna be developing your site. Cool, so check out juice. Like I said, I'm gonna leave a link to this page in the uh, video description so you can check it out for yourself. Even though it's really new, I've already been playing around with it on some personal projects and I find I really like it. In fact, this mix-ins for life thing is a pretty nice tagline because I could find myself using these a lot. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tuts. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.